Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. It's been a little bit of a tube. today, hope you're in grand, lost in your world. Welcome to another episode of How to Play Like the Legendary Rory Gallagher, everybody. Uh, it's been a long time getting to this, but certain things have cropped up, and it, it takes, if these teaching videos take a long time to film, and, and I say just sometimes I don't have enough time to get them filmed, they take, they take a, a fair few hours to say this. So, but we're here now, that's the most important part. So, Today, uh, we're going to be covering the song Bad Penny, and this goes along with uh, my last lesson, which is uh, uh, about unlocking the neck in D minor. Uh, because what I'm going to do today is I'm going to teach you the bare bones of Bad Penny. I'm going to teach you the chords and the, and the riff. Uh, I'm going to teach you the live version of a riff as well, as I think it's a bit more... I like that... I'll, I'll, well, I'll show you both, actually. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the album version, which is a lot simpler. And I'll show you the live version where he puts in this double stop, which is really, really cool. Uh, so I'll show you both of them. And then what? Uh, then once we've kind of covered the, the chords, the, the, the riff, and kind of some of the twiddly bits and stuff like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the guitar solos. And um, Rory, Rory's guitar solos in Bad Penny are all improvised, and they're different every time. So... I feel that's the way it should be if you're playing it. You don't really want to be learning things note for note. I will be teaching certain little Rory phrases that come along uh, just to kind of like, you know, if, if you get lost or you get stuck, you know, you can go back to them. So little phrases like... You know, stuff like that is it, it, really, really cool. And... Now, I'll be, I'll be teaching little licks like that um, when we get to the solo later on. But uh, I don't want to... There's no way of teaching Rory solos note for note, as most of the time he's just improvising and playing around. And in all fairness, the chord progression, which I'll get to in a minute, is such an awesome chord progression to practice improvisation over. Uh, I would highly recommend, um, if you've got a looper or if you don't have a looper, put on the song on YouTube... And just play along and just mess around with, and, and go back to episode two, to unlocking the neck in D minor, and use those scale shapes, uh, mainly minor pentatonics, um, and also kind of your positions up and down the neck to kind of just play around and, and find what sounds best to you. And, and you know, just, just stretch yourself basically across the neck and, and stretch yourself in kind of like your knowledge and put it into a practical way so as your kind of backing tracks going along you can kind of like you know you can kind of put all those kind of scales you know into kind of a practical sense instead of just being it theoretical uh, which is really important to do, start, you know, to use theory practical, otherwise it just becomes theory on its own, and that's not, it's not good. It's no, it's no good to you, trust me, um, because your brain just won't log it. If it's not used practically, your brain won't remember it. So, so yeah, when we get to the guitar solo section, I'll teach a couple of little kind of stock Rory kind of licks, and I'm also going to teach the final solo on the album version, as I am in love with it. I played it in the intro jam, and it's, it's right down here. And it just sounds immense. Um, so it's really, really cool. So, uh, so that's what's going to happen. I'm going to teach uh, the chords first. Um, kind of teach you the kind of little embellishments on the chords and the middle eight. Um, then I'm going to teach you the riff. And then we're going to talk about soloing at the end of the video. And also the harmonic capture that he does where he kind of goes... <laughs> that thing we'll talk about that as well because that's a really really cool thing to put into bad penny and rory did it a lot and it's just really awesome cool little get uh, rory trick to put in okay so um so the song's in d minor everybody standard tuning d minor uh i have no idea what rory recorded the album version on i don't know if it's his strap i don't know if it's one of his other weird guitars that he had J rory had a lot of strange guitars and a lot of strange amps as well so i don't i i I highly doubt it's a it's a high wattage amp. It, it the the rhythm track sounds like a small, kind of pushed little amp. It sounds like almost like a Fender, like um, uh, what are they called Princeton or something like that. I don't know. I, we'll never know exactly what Rory used, but I don't think it's like his Marshall fifty watts or his AC thirty, uh, because Rory used a lot of 
cool little amps and little guitars, uh, strange guitars in the studio to get different sounds. Um, the main riff sounds like he's strapped, but again, I could be totally wrong. Okay, so, uh, so, but what you want, it, you really want it to be kind of a single coil guitar, really, for it. Rory mainly uses position two on a strat, so both the bridge and the middle pickups together. Rory has that kind of setting for the main rhythm, and you can hear it on the live versions especially. I'm, you can't really hear it very well on the album version, but the album version, like I say, I don't know what guitar it is. Um, but um, if anybody knows, actually, leave a comment below and let us know what, uh, it, it, what it was. Um, but yeah, Rory, I mean, you ideally want to be in position uh, two for the main rhythm and the main riff of Bad Penny, because that's really where Rory kind of, that's Rory's home most of the time, is, is position two, those two pickups on. But for the guitar size, you can go down to just bridge pickup alone to get more cut. Uh, I did it at the beginning in the intro jam, because I, really, I don't really like position two or four, so I don't really use them a lot, and the sooner I can get out of them, the happier my ears are. Uh, I just don't like the sound of it very much. Um, but uh, you can go down to your bridge pickup for more cut, and you can also go to your neck pickup to make it a bit more of a warmer, fatter sound. So, uh, so yeah, so the song's in D minor, so let's talk about the chords, and let's get into Bad Penny. Which is uh, probably my favourite Rory Gallagher song, and it's actually the song that got me into Rory Gallagher. Anyway, so let's get into it. Okie dokie doo da day. Chords for Bad Penny, everybody, are D minor. <laughs> F major, C major, and D major. A uh, D minor, sorry. Did I say D major at the beginning? If I did, I apologise immensely. It's D minor, everybody. If I said D major, I'm a total fool. So D minor, F major, C major, back to D minor. And what it kind of does, it kind of lingers uh, on the D minor a bit. So it goes from D minor, F, C, then D. Starts over there. Starts over there. So again, just one more time. And start again. So if you can kind of count, like, you know, D minor is one bar, because uh, the song's in 4-4. Four, four. So if D minor is one bar, and then you've got your F uh, major is another bar, so that's two. Uh, C major is another bar, so that's three. And then when you get to your D minor again, that's four. And then it cycles around that and then start cycles again on the D. So it's one, two, three, four, one. If that makes any sense. Hopefully that makes sense. It's, you know, it's, it's a bit of um, it's, it's a really cool thing to do. It's really, really cool. It hangs on that, that the first chord of the, of the song, like, you know, just for a bit longer. Okay, so that's the main kind of... They're the main chords. That's the main kind of backing, basically. That's what you're soloing over when you get to the solos. And you're singing over if you're singing. Um, so that's the main core of the song. So it's pretty straightforward. Like I say, D minor is that shape. Hopefully you can kind of see. Um, uh, e and A strings are dead. So you're not playing them. I'm muting them with my thumb. So they're not on. So they're not played at all. It's D string open. Uh, your middle finger wants to be on the second fret on the G. First finger wants to be on the high E on the first fret. And your ring finger wants to be on the third fret on the B. So. And again, E A and E and the A strings are dead. So. so that's your first chord. Second chord, F major. Um, I play it with my thumb over the top. You can play it like this if you want. But I, I, I play it with my thumb over the top fretting the, the root note, the F on the first fret. And it's basically just the four chord. So my thumb goes on the first fret. And uh, Rory kind of plays this as well. Rory actually did it like this. He, his, his D would be like that. And then he'd switch to his F. Uh, and then he'd switch to his C. And then back to the D. So basically this finger is kind of redundant on the D. So you can kind of see this is how Rory would play it. Oh, sorry everyone. And uh, this is this is how I would do it. So again, find your own way of doing it. Don't necessarily stick to like the way Rory plays it because that might be a little uncomfortable. That's really uncomfortable for me. I can't, I can't do that. That's just really having that finger hovering there. It's just really weird. But Rory 
had a, the master of his little finger. Rory really could use his little finger like, you know, like any of these others. It was really strong. But, um, yeah, so um, F major, sorry, everybody, misses the A string. So the A string's dead. So it's a uh, root note on the first fret on the low E. A string dead. Uh, your ring finger wants to be on the third fret on the D. Uh, middle finger wants to be on the second fret on the G. And then your first finger wants to bar the uh, B and the high E on the first fret. And you can actually not play the high E if you don't want to. You can just play uh, the E, the E, D, G, uh, D, the E, D, G, and B strings. But you can kind of get that if you want. It's up, it's up to you. Rory would actually change. So, and then you C, uh, which is, you know, standard C uh, open chord. You're not playing your low E. Ring finger is on the third fret on the A string. Uh, your middle finger is on the D string on the second fret. G string open. Uh, first finger is on the first fret on the B string. And your high E is dead. So, but you can have high E open. But you don't really hear the high E when Rory plays it very much. It's it kind of it's kind of those four notes really: the A, D, G, and B string, and then back to D minor. Okay, so that's the main core of the song: D minor, F major, C major, back to D minor. Uh, the middle A, the "Some Lonely Nights" bit, is C major, G major, back to uh, C major. And then you go to B flat major, which is a power chord here, basically. And uh, that is uh, first fret on your A. So your E string's dead, killed by your uh, either your thumb or your first finger. So you want to be on the first fret on your A string. And then you want to be barring the D, G, and B strings on the third fret. And then you move up to the C major. Uh, either in power chord form, it's basically the exact same shape, moved up to the third fret and fifth fret, or you can go to the open. It doesn't matter. You can choose. Roy would change. It would go from like or you know, it, it really, you know, it, it, it's, it's totally up to you. So the middle eight is C. B flat, C. So one more time because I, I forgot to spell out the uh, say out the chords. Hopefully you can hear me. So C, G, C, B flat, C. Now back back into the uh, main part of the song. So um, so yeah, that's it. That's the whole chords. That's the entire song. Uh, the song doesn't have a chorus it's basically just a verse well it, it kind of has an intro uh intro riff and then it's verse one then it's back to the intro riff and then it's verse two and then it's to a solo and then it goes to the middle eight for one then it goes back to a verse and then a double verse and then it goes to the middle eight again and then it comes out to another verse and then it goes into the outro solo so that's the order um, there's no chorus to speak of at all. There's no, there's no kind of like you know, it's not verse, chorus, verse, chorus song. It's not very, it's not straight ahead in that way at all. So it's just basically uh, a lot of verses and the middle eight in there after the um, guitar solo. Okay, so um, and Rory would obviously yeah live. He, they would they would jam it out after uh, his second, well after his uh, second guitar solo, uh, they would jam out and just kind of mess around. And I'll talk about that a bit more later on when we get to the soloing section. But, so, uh, let's get to talking about a riff, which is this. Which is just awesome. You can really hear that kind of, like, celtic -y Irish roots thing that Rory had in ingrained in his music. It's awesome. So, what, you do what you're doing is you're just playing your D minor as normal. And, when you get and playing your F normal. And you kind of play the bass note first, so it's... D. So bass note twice, dum dum, and then full F. And then you go to your C. And what do you when you do when you get to your C? You play the third fret on your uh, A string, 
that's the first note of a riff. And then it's open D string. And then it's second fret on the D string. And then you go back to your D chord. So. So I'll, I'll try and do that really slow. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, so D minor to start with. try and kind of uh, get my fingers out of the way I can see on the little screen I've got that I'm, uh, it's a bit confusing <laughs> try one more time so after that's kind of like a walk back to the, uh, the, the D minor so to say so um, and then you get it which is just a hammer on open uh, open A string, uh, hammering onto the third fret on the A string, and then you hit your open G string. So the whole thing is. I hope I hope this makes sense. I really do. I'm, I'm, I've got the, the usual fear I'm doing it wrong and I'm doing roaring and injustice here. So D minor. In the moment, you can play it fine when the camera's not on, but as soon as that goes click, you're like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so that's the riff. That's the main riff. So that's what the song starts with. Actually, what? The actual album version starts with him doing this kind of like scratchy. Which is just muting all the strings and the strumming. Um, but then you come into a riff. <laughs> So, um, so that's the main riff, and that happens up until the that riff, which we'll get to in but a second, everybody. So that's the intro. It does goes around that twice. And then you're into the bit. Okay. And during the verses, Roy just strums the chords. He doesn't put these little kind of runs and embellishments in. He just goes. Because he's singing, it's a, it's a lot simpler to play that and and just straight than it is to sing and try and get the, uh, the, the little runs in, so to say. So during the verses, you don't add them. They're just part of the riff of the intro and also the outro on the live version you hear him do it on the live version outro because the original just fades out so so yeah so that's the main riff of bad penny moving on to the the other main riff of bad penny which is this which is the hook of the song so uh what we're doing here the album version is this i'll show you the album version first and then i'll show you the uh the live version which is a little bit more involved and a little bit more fiddly and you need to use your little finger for it so the album version is this um, you start off on the um seventh fret on your g string and then you go back to your fifth fret g string and then back to your seventh fret g string and they're both picked then you go down to your B string 6th fret, uh, B string 8th fret, and then you bend up a tone to that, to that note. But it needs to be a bend, you can't really go to it, you can hear Rory really bend it, and he kind of abrows it a little bit, but not a lot. And then you release the bend to the 8th fret again on your B string. Yeah. So once you release the bend back to your 8th fret on your, G, your B string, 
you go down to your 6th fret B string, 5th fret B string, 6th uh, fret B string, 5th fret B string, and finish up on your D note, which is the 7th fret on the G string. So the note you start on, the note is the note you finish on. So the album version does the day. This is kind of... There's like a roll in there, which I forgot to actually talk about, but that's just... You have it all planned out at the beginning of the video, and then once the camera goes clicking on, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, and you miss bits out. So I do apologise, everybody. Hopefully, like I say in all my videos, if I forget to say something, hopefully you can kind of see it, uh, like, you know, see what I'm doing. If I forget to mention it, hopefully you can just kind of see what I'm doing. So the whole riff uh, is this, really slow. I mean, can I do it? Django, Ryan, Art Style, let's try. <laughs> Try it really slow. And I say that's us going over D, F, and C. So, uh, so that's the album riff, and it's just yeah. <laughs> So that is really, really, it's such an awesome little riff. It really is cool. So uh, what happens, the whole song so far is you come in on your intro. And in all fairness, on the album version, the main riff sounds like it's on the bridge pickup of a guitar. I don't know what guitar. It sounds like a strap, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, uh, the main riff sounds like it's on the bridge pickup. It's not in position two, like the in like um, the intro sounds. It sounds like a position two. Again, we'll, we'll never probably know, um, because Rory had a lot of strange guitars and uh, low wattage amps he used for recording, and uh, he didn't necessarily use his uh, AC30s or big amps for recording or... Or his 61 strap, for that matter, for recording. Yeah, lots of different guitars. Um, so, yeah, but it sounds like... The, the main riff sounds like the bridge pickup. But live, Roy would always be in position two. So it's always these two pickups on. So it's live, it's them two. Album version is the bridge on its own. And uh, kind of the main riff sounds like a kind of position two, but I'm not 100% sure. It could be position one. It just could just play the amp and the guitar sound. We will never know. But if you do know, I can say, let us know, because it'd be really cool to know, actually, what he did use. Okay, so, um, so that's the album riff. Now, that little run there just makes it. It's really, really cool. Uh, the live version is this. It, it's a little bit more... A little bit more involved because you've got to leave this this high um your little finger on the high e string in there and also rory would start it by droning the d string with that like like that so you do that like that and it's the d string's quite subtle but it is there if you listen closely to the live versions because uh by that point he was kind of like a very kind of a free piece so he was covering a lot more ground and he'd switched from Fenders to um, to Marshalls by that point, the JMP fifty, I think it was. Um, and uh, he, he still, I've seen, I've still seen him play with his AC thirty and a few others. Um, at rock at the Rock Palace gig in in, in uh, the eighties, he had a, a Vox AC thirty, and like, I think it looks like he has like two or three Mesa Boogie combos as well, um, and a Boss distortion pedal, which he always had by that point that was sat on top of his amp and it was a really cool boss distortion pedal and i'll have to talk about that in another video because i could be here for hours and i'm supposed to be teaching okay so this riff is slightly different it's, it's the same but different so you start by droning your d string over like that and then once you get down to your b string um that d string will need to be killed straight away it does sound muddy 
just starts to get in the way of the high strings and dominate a bit more. So with that bit, you're getting that D string. And then once you get down to the B string, on the sixth fret, that wants to be go that wants to go away. So. so that's exactly the same. But when you bend up the eighth fret on the B string, you want to put your little finger on the eighth fret on your high E. And you need to bend up the B string, but leave the high E where it is. And it's like a country double stop kind of thing. And Rory do it quite a lot. Roar, and also, I need to talk about hybrid picking, but I'll do that in a minute. Let's teach the riff first, Dave. I'm getting ahead of myself, everybody. Hopefully you can kind of see. Let me see if I can kind of maybe every angle. I'm killing the D string with the fatty part of my right hand there. So once I'm done with it, this hand comes in to kill that string. But that that's the that's that part. And then what you do is when you release the bend, you keep this high E string on the uh, on the uh, eighth fret on. Until you get it until you get to that bit. So it's So the whole live version really slow is this. One more time, I'll try to do it really slow. There's no way I can do this Django Reinhardt style, so everybody with two fingers, I'm, uh, so I apologize. So. Hopefully, hopefully you can kind of see what's going on there. Like I said, if I'm not explaining it very well, which I always think I'm not. Um, so that's that's the live version of Bad Penny Riff, and that's the version I play because I, I love the sound of that, that kind of thing. And you hear Rory do it so much, and he would do stuff like that. And uh, hybrid picking, uh, for those who, who who don't know what hybrid picking is, is where you're using your plectrum and your middle finger on your right hand. So what uh, Rory would do sometimes, not all the time, I have seen him just uh, playing it with his plectrum, not hybrid picking, is when he gets to when he gets to this bend, Rory would sometimes pluck the high E with his middle finger and the B string with his plectrum. But sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he actually just strums it with his plectrum. And there's not a great deal of difference, to be honest with you. And, and the same thing goes with the... That bit. Sometimes Roy would hybrid pick it, where he's using the, the, that finger as well. And I switch back to plectrum, and sometimes he wouldn't. Because Roy had been a field player, it was just basically down to how he felt at that moment of what he did. I don't think he would ever think about what he was doing really because it just was second nature to him. So uh, sometimes he hybrid picks, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, you don't have to hybrid pick it at all to get that riff. Okay, so, so far, this is what we've got. So that riff is kind of like a um, is kind of like the main theme of the song. After the intro riff, that's the kind of like the yeah, did it here is the main theme of the song. 
And that's the album version. You don't have to, uh, the live version, sorry. You don't have to do the live version, you can do the album version. If you can't get that, because it is, it is difficult, it took me a long time to be able to get that. And the bend's the hardest bit. Leaving your little finger where it is while you bend the B string is is, is quite difficult, because sometimes when you first start off, you kind of like, your hand's tendency is to kind of bend all the strings. And uh, you don't want that. Okay, so that's the chord riff. That's the main kind of theme riff. Uh, and that's what happens during verses. It's just kind of straight. Uh, when the middle eight comes in, it's exactly the same. It's just straight. It's just some lonely nights. <laughs> Your memory falls and you won't go away. And then back into the verse again. Uh, what Rory would do sometimes coming out the middle eight, where it, instead of going to the C, he would walk up an octave chord, and I'll I'll tell you what it is in a bit. So, uh, he would do that. So, it's it, an octave chord basically is just like a higher and low octave of a chord. So basically, if you're playing a power chord B flat five here on the A D and G, just remove your middle finger, uh, sorry, your ring finger, bonk, get rid of that. So you just got these two notes, which is the same note, the same, they're both a B flat, but your little finger is fretting the higher one. And what Rory did is go first, third, fifth, seventh, eighth, back to the seventh. So I'd go like this. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that's basically the song. That is literally basically the song. Uh, there are, in the album version, there are variations on the riff, which is down here. It's basically just an octave higher from here, so it's exactly... You know, played in the Ingrid Malm scene style there, everybody. Uh, but it's basically just an octave higher. So what this is, is you start on the 15th fret on your B string. Go to your 13th fret B string. And then you go down to your 13th fret on your high E. Go to your, and then you go to your 15th fret high E. Bend up 15th fret tone. Release. Back to your 15th fret. 13th fret high E. 12. 13. And then you do that between the 12th and the 13th. And then you finish back up on your 15th fret on your B string. So that really slows it. So that's a variation. Rory never did it live. Uh, it's just a studio thing, that is. Uh, and it's basically just a harmony to, to this one down here. So how's that one? You know, he's doing another one. It's really cool. If you cover Bad Penny in a band with two guitarists, it's really cool. If one does the low one, one does the high, it sounds really amazing. Um, it's really, really cool. But uh, if you're just a trio, then uh, you won't be doing the low one. It's just fatter. And also later on, Rory actually scrapped the... That, that bit. Great note there, wasn't it? Um, Rory actually scrapped that and started using an octave divider and just doing... with an octave divider on, so it sounded like this. Just not that rubbish, because Rory was better than me. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds really weak and weird without distortion on it, octave dividers do, they don't sound that great. But um, but yeah, so that's the two versions of the main theme. There's the album version, which is simpler, then there's the live version, which is a little bit more complex with that kind of double stop thing. That's the main kind of verse, that's the main kind of riff. The chord riff, and that's what he's doing during verses. That's the middle eight, and that's the octave thing he would do live. Uh, when he, uh, not every time, but every, you know, uh, when he felt like it. And also, Jerry McAvoy would kind of back him up on that a few times as well. Um, I forget 100%, but I think it's actually a bass run originally, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me. Um, 
I've heard so many versions of it now, it's really hard to... I don't really listen to the album version as much anymore. I, listen to, I just love listening to as many different live versions as I can find. So, main verse, middle eight, main riff, main theme riff, uh, and the octave uh, riff. Is there anything else I haven't covered that I should before I go on to the soloing? Um, I don't think there is everywhere. I think that's it. Um, for the song. It's a very simple, straight-ahead song. Like I say, there's no chorus. It's just the order of it is really, really cool. So like I say, the intro, it's got an intro, and then it's got the intro theme, and then it's got the first verse, and then it's got the intro theme again, second verse, and then it goes into a solo. Well, it goes into the theme, and then goes into a solo, but the whole thing could be classed as solo one, if you will. And then um, it goes into a double verse. After, oh, no, sorry, it goes into the middle eight after that, then goes into a double verse. And then goes into the main theme again. Oh, sorry, middle eight again. And then goes into the last verse. And then it goes into the outro solo. And then it fades out in the album version. Uh, live, the order changed all the time. Well, not all the time, but quite a lot of the time. It would just change to how Rory felt. Um, so live, sometimes you'd get the chord riff intro. And then the main theme. And then Rory would do a solo before he came into the first verse. And then sometimes I've seen him do a solo after the first verse. Like he extends the main kind of theme, so to say. He extends it. And um, sometimes he would do the middle eight once. Sometimes he would do it twice. Sometimes he wouldn't do the double verse. Well, most of the time he didn't do the double verse after the first middle eight. Uh, so, it, you know, the order varies uh, depending on the version you're listening to, really. Um, so, yeah. So that's that. Yeah, so, okay. So let's move on to soloing over Bad Penny because it's an awesome, awesome song to solo over. Um, like I say, the song's in D minor. In the last video, I broke down the neck in D minor. So every note that I spoke about, all the shapes that I spoke about in the last video, talking about D minor, you can use to your advantage in this song to scale the neck. Because Rory never really played up and down pentatonic boxes. He plays very up and down. He's not... You don't stick to just the pentatonic box. He goes all over the place. So, um... So let's talk about some Rory licks. Okay, okay, so I've picked this one to start with. Uh, there's so many that I can kind of teach, and I'll try and get through as many as I can. So, a really cool start to a guitar solo in Bad Penny is this. Which is a very kind of straightforward blues lick. So you're bending up the 12th fret on your G tone so you're bending to that note and then you're using uh, that's with your uh, ring finger reinforced by your first and your middle finger and then you take your first finger and bar the 10th fret on your high E and B strings so bend up and then you go to your 13th fret on your B string and then you play it once and then you bend it off And it's, it, it comes in really nicely out of there. Uh. So I've missed a bit out there. So sorry, the whole lick is this. I'll do it really slow so you can kind of see. So it's basically, once you get to the 13th fret on your B, you pull off to your 10th fret B, you go back to your 13th fret B, and then bend off. And then you can go to this. So 10th fret high E, 12th fret high E, 13th fret high E, 12th fret high E, 10th uh, fret high E, uh, 13th fret B, and then bend up again. Then you go back to it, then you can do this. So, again, the same kind of run as the last time. Uh, 10, uh, 12, thir uh, 13, 12. Then you kind of do a hammer on pull off thing. Then you go back to your 13th fret B. 
and then you bend up your 13th fret on high. So the whole thing kind of so far we've got is this. So that, that's really cool. And then you can kind of go down your minor pentatonic to resolve on your D note. So this is quite a cool little, uh, these, are, these are actually Rory licks that he kind of would start the solo with kind of every now and again. So that's a really cool kind of like way to start a solo because you've got that Rory thing straight away there. So that, and that's just using minor pentatonics with your uh, F major scale note. So that's just your F major scale there. And uh, you've got that. Those kind of things. So uh, that that's a really cool way to start a Bad Penny solo. Kind of sounds like that Paris version, which I am absolutely in love with. Okay, so uh, what else have we got? Okay, another little reoccurring theme in Bad Penny solos. Rory do this. So that is starting on 10th fret high E. Again, it's kind of the same kind of run, but it's a different rhythm to... Totally different rhythm, same notes, different rhythm. It changes everything. Rhythm does. It really does change everything. And also the feel you put into it changes everything as well. So this little run is really, really cool. So again, you're starting on the 10th fret on your high E, 12th fret high E, 13th fret high E, for, uh, back to the 12th fret high E, and then you do this kind of, uh, kind of, uh, Hammer on from the 10th to the 12th. And then you pull off back to the 10th. And then you go back up to your G string. On your uh, 13th fret. And then you finish back up on your 10th fret on your high E. And then once you kind of resolve back to that. You need to go to the 13th fret high E. Like that. So the, the 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 whole lick starts like this, but then once you kind of resolve it back to this note, it changes. So I'll do. I'll try and do it really slow. Hopefully you can kind of get it. So that's another one, and it, you can also end it like. And then when, once you get to the 13th fret on your B string, go to your 10th fret B string, and then go back to your 13th fret B string, and then bend that upper toad. Like that. So putting all that together, you kind of get this. So you can kind of hear there's a there's a Rory solo starting to form just in that bit. And those are kind of mainstays. But what I would advise you do is start it with this. And then try and figure out your own bit. So... those kind of stock Roy licks, if you want to call them that, um, in when you feel like they need to be there. If I, make, I hope that makes sense. I, I, it's really important to be able to improvise over Rory's music. It, it, it's the same as Jimi Hendrix. You can learn things note for note. Oh, boss me plectrum. Where did that, where did that go? I'll find another one. Um, uh, it, it's important to kind of like 
be able to kind of like make that section of the song your own. If you, if you, if hopefully that makes sense. And you, you, you know, you really want to be able to kind of like, you know, if you want to play like Rory Gallagher and, and, and Jimi Hendrix, they would just, just, just improvise all the time because it's very liberating to do. You know, you're not tied into doing that same old solo, the same old way all the time. So to say, you know, you can, you can just do whatever you kind of want when you feel like it. And that's what Rory's music is all about, is feel. You can really feel it changes all the time. And um, Jerry McAvoy talks about in his book that would never have a set list. Rory just launched into a song. And if you weren't ready, you got left behind. You know, and that's the kind of kind of thing is, is, is really cool about Rory. It's just relentless. It's so cool. But the same thing goes for his soloing. You, you want to be able to kind of play around. And I say, go back to... Uh, episode two, if you if you're not 100 sure on the five position of pentatonic scale and all the extra added notes you can put in, because you can find all sorts of different kind of Rory licks in those shapes all over the next. We're just sticking to minor pentatonic here, and we've already got like the buildings of a really really cool Rory solo. <laughs> It sounds like Rory Gallagher because, well, they, it should do, but his licks. Um, so, yeah, so use these kind of stock licks as something to kind of build on, so to say. So take them and then make it your own. And start going down and up the neck. Okay, so I want to talk about, uh, so yeah, that's, that's you know, just build on those licks and just kind of play up and down the neck uh, and just mess around, have fun. Just put the song on and just spend the entire song soloing. Don't play rhythm if you want, you know, just just play the solo. Just just over while Rory's singing, just mess around. Just just find his vocal melody and, and, and steal some of those kind of like, you know, vocal licks, so to say. Uh, and the kind of like the rhythm of the vocal is really, really cool. So uh, stuff like that. Uh, another thing Rory would do is his tapping thing. And I really want to talk about tapping with Rory a lot because he he kind of... Rory gets overlooked for his tapping. And I don't know why. It's really cool. But Rory would do this. Or he would do... That kind of thing where he'd capt capture the note, so to say, with a, a higher thing. So what you're doing here is you're hammering on between the 5th and the 7th fret on your G string. And between them, you're kind of hitting the, uh, where are we, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19th fret on your G string. Oh, sorry, I'm, that was great, I totally missed. And you're kind of walking it down, so 19, 17, 15, 14. And it sounds really strange, but in the context of the song, it works. So that's another thing. And another thing he would do is capture the note. So it would kind of um, run into it. And he would just, as he bends up the 7th fret on the G string, he would hammer on to the 19th fret on the G string up here. So you get this high note. It's really, really cool. And you can get it into your solos in, in really cool ways. <laughs> Like that. So it's really, really cool. Uh, and tapping as well. And uh, Rory would sometimes use his, his plectrum. And sometimes he'd use his finger. I think Rory used his middle finger. Like that. I, I can't. I use my first. So that's uh, another little Rory that you can get into. It's really, really cool. 
another one though. Now this one is cool. Ah! Can't get the string. <laughs> this one's amazing. It's really hard though because I can't grab my string. I've got sweaty hands because I'm nervous everybody. Okay, so what this one is is really, really cool. You fret your 10th fret on your B string and then you hammer on uh, pretty much the exact same kind of thing as up here to your 13th fret on your B string. And then with this hand, you reach behind the string. I don't know if, you, I, I, I like this, and you grab the string. So pull it up and just shake the string. Because Rory didn't have a tremolo arm, so he couldn't do that. So he had to come up with his own way of doing tremolo tricks. And this is one of them. So like that. So, and again, you can fit that in really, really cool ways. <laughs> It sounds really weak without distortion because I haven't got the I haven't got the output I'm only on clean. It sounds really cool with distortion, trust me. Um, I might show that at the end quickly, but I don't want to peek out the camera at this point in time by kicking on a loud distortion pedal. So that's another little lick with very cool Rory lick. So, and grab it, just grab it. It'll probably send it out of tune, but that's okay. No, not this time. But um, it's a, that's an awesome Rory lick. And you see him doing that a lot. Like I say, Rory didn't have a tremolo arm. He broke it off. So in the guitar. And he just had it locked down. So he had to find these other ways of doing tremolo tricks. And that is one of them. He just hammering on like that. And just grabbing that string. And just, just yanking on it, basically. And just doing that kind of wobbly, wobbly tremolo arm thing without a tremolo arm. Really, really cool. Uh, remember... There's an awesome quote from John Lennon, which is, limitations breed innovation. And that is the absolute definition of that statement there. What Rory did there. That is a limitation not having a tremolo system working. And he's in, had to innovate and just pull the string. Does the exact same thing. It's just a little bit harder to do. But... um it looks cool. When when you see Rory just grab the string, he's just pulling on it. It's just so cool. Okay, so so that's uh, some of the licks. Is there anything else? Um, like I say, play up and down. Try and learn to play up and down the neck. Not just up and down the minor pentatonic box. Try and move around. Like to, doing runs like that and big bends. And another thing is pinch harmonics. Really dig in and try and get... Because Rory would get that a lot. He would really dig in and get pinch harmonics. I think I might have to do a video on that totally separate. Because um, in the ways Rory would do that. it's really, really cool. Okay. So, I want to talk about this now. Talking about innovations without tremolo use. This is the harmonic. This is like called a like This is what I would like to call it when he catches the harmonic. Um, so, what it is, is the fifth fret on a G string harmonic... And then what he does is he bends behind the knot. And he just bends it. And it's just really, really cool. And you can kind of get it in with... <laughs> it sounds really weak compared to the chords though without distortion again. Need distortion, man! Um, so that's another thing you can do is just hit that 5th fret harmonic on the G. And kind of hit it. And you can start solos like that. You know, he, he, or you can end, you put it, put it halfway through your solo. You know, it's really cool. And Rory did that a lot about capturing the harmonic and, and bending behind the noise. Really, really cool. Okay, so there's some kind of stock Rory licks for you to kind of like revert to. But it's really important to kind of like start to kind of like find your own way in the song, so to say. So just kind of playing up and down the neck not necessarily that way, uh, not vertically, playing across the neck is really important. And uh, and just basically just messing around and having fun. That is the key. Have fun with it. And like I say, just put the song on and just solo over the top. Just play around until you find things you really, really like because you will. And you're oh, I like that. And then you also find things you don't like as well. And you're like, oh, not doing that again. That was terrible. And again, um... You will mess up, and you will make mistakes, and you will hit duff notes. But every time you do, you're getting better. 
So, you know, every time you hit a wrong note and you go, oh, that was horrible, your brain learns. So you're getting better. Every time you make a mistake, you're getting better. Okay, so now what I will teach you is the final solo on the album version because this is immense. I love this solo. It's really short, but it's really, really cool. Okay, so this solo is all the way up this high end of the guitar. So we're on the uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, we are on the 20th fret on the B string to start with. And uh, it sounds to me like it's the neck pickup uh, on a guitar. I don't know what the guitar is. It does sound like a neck pickup to me. So it starts with this big bend where you're bending up the 20th fret really quite far. And then you release it. And then you go to your 18th fret B. And then to your 19th fret G. And you play that twice. And then you go back down to your 18th fret B. Uh, 20th fret B. And then you bend that off. And then you bend up again. Back to your 18th fret B. And then you bend up again that 20th fret. Oh, sorry, no. Oh, you fool. The 20th fret on the high E. <laughs> so, the whole thing so far. Let's see if I can move around here. So, the whole thing so far is this. And then you do this. It's kind of like a kind of a release bend. You kind of bending it and then release it. It's really hard to do with two fingers. It actually kind of hurts. Like that. Um, so the whole thing. And then you go back to this. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm lost, everybody. After that time, you go back to your 20th fret on your B string. Bend up. Release to the 20th fret. So I, I, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm totally lost with numbers. It's confusing me. So hopefully you can kind of see where I am and what I'm doing. And then you get to this leg. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I've had to stop talking about numbers because my brain just decided to go, huh? So I'm, 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 I'm blaming it on my being dyslexic. I, I have really difficulty with numbers. I really can't figure them out. They just, when it gets into double figures, like 19s, 18s, 20s and all that lot, it gets really confusing. So the whole thing, I'll try and do it really slow and I'll try and do it Django right outside. Hopefully you'll be able to see the strings and the notes I'm, I'm going to. That last bend is amazing. So cool. So that's the final solo on the album version. It's a really, really cool solo to because it's lovely and melodic. It's on the high register of the guitar, so it's not the easiest to be able to kind of get to. It's kind of fiddly in a way, but it's really cool. And it really gives you, excuse me, a lead into that last solo because it's a real big... Into 
an outro kind of thing. And it's net pickup that is because it just need, it warms it up a little bit more on, on the bridge boot. It's a little bit too shrill. Okay, so um, is there anything else I wanted to talk about now? I don't think there is. Everybody, I think that's the whole shebang. Um, covered all the main rhythm parts. Uh, there, there's like I say, there's a lot. There's a lot more Rory licks out there, but I want you. I'm not being lazy. I promise. I want you to go away and figure them out using episode two uh, with the five position of pentatonic scale in D minor. Find those licks and figure them out, because I can tell you them, but then you're not learning, because I'm just showing you it. You know, what I mean, it, 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 it's a lot more. It will increase your playing if you're figuring them out as well. I don't, I don't want to get to that point where I'm just showing everything note for note because I don't feel that's productive to to learning like Rory. Uh, a learning to play like Rory is just improvising over his songs and just and learning the neck, especially in D minor, which is Rory used a lot. Um, you know, I, I don't want to show you everything. I want to leave a lot to you because that's the most important part. Is that a lot? Is it's it's down to you more than anything. Um, it really is. It really is important to kind of like you know to find your own way in, in this as well. It's not, you know, it's. I don't want to be the one who's just kind of like, you know, showing every little detail. I want you to be able to find your own little way and your own little stamp as well. And then you develop your own voice on the guitar instead of just kind of like copying what Rory did. Because you'll find your own little licks that fit over Bad Penny that Rory probably didn't even play. Uh, so, and that's really important. I think it's really, really cool because then you have your own stamp on it as well as all these Rory stock phrases to revert to if you want to which is really really cool and i say about end solo which is amazing okay so um i think that's it everybody i really do um i really hope this has been helpful and i hope it's, i hope there's been some stuff in there you can kind of take away uh if you if you if you want to learn bad penny or you've already le learned bad penny like some things you can kind of like incorporate um like I said, I don't want to teach everything note for note. I don't like note for note. I feel, especially for people like Rory Gallagher and Jimi Hendrix, it's it's not about note for note. It's about expressing yourself and, and just playing the guitar and playing music. Um, uh, sorry, not about just playing the guitar. It's about playing music. So, you know, it, it, I don't want to teach things note for note as I don't feel it's... Certain things are really cool note for note, but I think when you start to just get your own flow and just you, you're just playing unconsciously, and you're just listening to the music. That that's when you know that's when things uh, happen that are really cool. So uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I hope it's been informative. Uh, if it's not, then I do I do apologize horrendous uh, immensely horrendously. What? That's the wrong word. My brain's frizzle fried from trying to figure out 19, 20th fret on the B string, 20th fret on the A string. Oh my god, my brain. Um, I can't do numbers very well, everybody. So I do apologize. I hope you could see what I was doing on that last thing because I just. I was just getting confused and I, I was just losing the plot a bit. So hopefully you can kind of see what I was doing down here. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative and uh, I will see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Um, I'm off to lay down in a, in a very dark room with an ice pack on my brain. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. Uh, I'll see you again very soon for another one. Have a great one. Goodbye now.